portion of God's Word we look at this evening is recorded in Luke chapter 10. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. But only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. How many of you are list makers? A few of you? I am a definite list maker. Already by Thursday, I'm looking ahead to the coming week, and I'm making a list of things that need to be done for worship, for sermons, for Bible classes, for visits, for meetings. I won't bore you with the whole thing, but, but there's actually a process I use to prioritize each of those things on my schedule, each of those things on my calendar, and then to take that prioritized list and somehow make it fit chronologically into the week so that everything's done when it needs to be done. I'll also admit to you that when I'm making these lists and when I'm working on these lists, sometimes I write things down that I've already done just so I can cross them off. I know that's weird. I know that's nerdy, but it makes me feel good. But that's me. That's what I do. That's my ministry list. And I know that you have duties, you have obligations, you have responsibilities, you have tasks that you need to do, things you enjoy doing, things you tend to put off, the regular, the occasional, things you do all alone, things you do with other people, things you're excited about, things you don't necessarily care for. But that's you. That's your to-do list. That's you, perhaps, at work. But what about at home? What about the house? Isn't there a to-do list there? Regular maintenance, routine, upkeep, inside chores, outside chores, washing the windows, doing the laundry, mowing the lawn, raking the leaves. And then what about the, the family? There's kind of a to-do list there, too, isn't it? With appointments and events and activities, practices and games, lessons and, and recitals. Think about the to-do list just for our general health, our general hygiene. You get up in the morning, you got to get ready, right? Before you go to bed, you got to get ready. You got to eat every day. You got to sleep at night. You, maybe you get some some exercise. Maybe you have a volunteer to-do list. Things you do here at church. Things you do in your community, your neighborhood. Maybe things you do through the local government. And now what? Now it's December, now it's the holidays, now it's the Christmas, and there's a whole nother to-do list out there, isn't there? Now there's Christmas shopping and going from store to store and battling the traffic and waiting in line, and there's hauling packages and there's hiding presents and there's wrapping gifts and there's Christmas baking and Christmas cookies, and that's a whole nother grocery list and a whole nother set of errands, and you got to decorate the house inside the house, outside the house, on top of the house. And maybe there's holiday work parties you got to go to or family get-togethers you're going to do. Maybe you're going to go out of town. Maybe this is the time to get the family photo, family Christmas pictures for the Christmas card, and then you got to write the Christmas letter. And what? All these things to do... We can't keep up. We lose track. We lose focus. We, we forget. We forget what we're, we're doing. We walk into a room and say, what did I come in here for? What was I doing? What did you ask me? What did you need me to pick up at the store? What was I going to tell you? Could you please pass me that, uh, that, that, that fork? Yes, could you please pass me the fork? Too much stuff on our plates, you think? Burning the Advent candle on both ends? Being pulled in this direction and, and dragged in that direction. That's what the word that Luke used to describe Martha literally means. He said distracted. It really means being pulled, being dragged, this direction, that direction, from all sides, just being spread way too thin. 
as you look at that, so much on our plates, what tends to get left off? The one thing needful, the one thing needed, the one thing necessary, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Martha lost sight of that, didn't she? Martha had welcomed these men, Jesus and his disciples, into his house. She wanted them there. She wanted to take care of them. She wanted to serve them. She wanted to do all of those things for them, but she lost sight of the one thing needful, all those preparations that had to be made. We don't know what those preparations were. Was it washing the feet of each one of these men as they came into her house? Maybe. Was it just providing a, a basin of water, enough towels to go on? Maybe. Was it providing enough chairs, enough space for 13 grown men to suddenly descend upon her home? Was it getting the food ready for all those things? Whatever it was, those were the things that were pulling her and dragging her and tugging her in all these directions that were distracting her. But that wasn't the only thing, was it? The other thing that was distracting her, the other thing that was bugging her, was her own sister. Because here she was doing all of these things for everyone else who was in her home, but where was her sister? Her sister was just sitting there, sitting there on the floor, doing nothing in her mind. Can you picture that scene? Can you imagine the stares, the glares that Martha was giving Mary? The way she tried to get Mary's attention, perhaps, with a cough, <coughs> Mary, <coughs> Clearing her throat, <clears> throat> sis, <clears throat> walking by and poking her, maybe walking by and kicking her feet as they're sticking out as she's lying on the floor, maybe going in the kitchen and banging the pots and pans, whatever in there was to bag. And finally, she'd had enough. It had frustrated her so much that she said to Jesus, Lord, don't you care that my sister left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha came the response. You are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better. Of all the things that needed to be done, of all the things that were pulling her this way and that, spending time with Jesus, listening to him speak, wasn't even on her list. How many times haven't we been distracted by the things of the world? How many times haven't all those to-do lists in life pulled us this way and that way to the extent that we don't even have time for the Word of God? Satan's clever that way, isn't he? Satan has a way of enabling us and allowing us and maybe even guilting us into putting so much on our plates that there simply isn't room for everything. And what invariably gets left off? Sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to the one thing needful. That's not to say the other things we're doing in life are bad or even sinful. Martha had the best of intentions in mind, didn't she? Her Lord, her Savior, was in her home. Of course she was going to serve him and serve his disciples. She, she was going to serve as a host. She was kind. She was thoughtful. She was generous. But at what expense? At the expense of listening to the very words of God himself. How many times don't the good intentions that we have, the nice things that we want to do for our children, especially at the holidays, the considerate things we want to do for our spouses, especially at the holidays, the kind things we want to do for our friends, the above and beyond things we want to do at work, the considerate things we want to do for those around us, put so much on our plate and pull us this way and that, but at what expense? Not having time for Jesus in his work. That wasn't Mary, was it? No. Mary was going to listen to Jesus, and nothing was going to pull her away from that. M Martha was like, Jesus is in my house. i got to sweep the floor. i got to wash the windows. i got to dust the furniture. i got to make a meal. Martha was like, Jesus is in my house. He's got the words of eternal life. i got to listen to this man speak. Nothing was more important than that at that moment, and Mary wasn't going to let anyone rob her of that. Dear Christian, do those to-do lists have you distracted? Do the holidays have you distracted? Go to Jesus. 
Go to Jesus and listen to him speak in his word in the middle of the week, at the end of the week, at the start of the week. Go to Jesus in his word in the privacy of your own bedroom when you're all alone and sit at his feet. Go to Jesus with your family in your kitchen around the dinner table and listen to him speak. Go to Jesus in his house with your fellow believers and listen to the one thing needful. Go to Jesus and hear him say, be still. Be still and know that I am God. Go to Jesus and hear him say, I am the good shepherd. I love you. I laid down my life for you only to take it up again. I forgive you. I forgive you for all of your sins. Go to Jesus in his word and, and hear him say, I will never leave you or forsake you. I am with you always to the very end of the age. So call upon him. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I'll deliver you. Cast all your anxiety on me. I care for you. Nothing in this world will ever separate you from me. I am on your side. And if I'm on your side, if I'm for you, Jesus says, then nothing, no one can ever be against you. I will continue to work all things for your good, for your spiritual and eternal good. Christian, don't ever let anyone rob you of that, of your time, your personal time, sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to the one thing needful. There is nothing more important than that. And everything else can wait. Amen. Please stand.